¿Cómo están? Hola, teacher. ¿Todo bien? ¿Todo bien? Qué bueno, qué bueno. Good, ¿Saben? teacher. What about ¿Saben you? Que... Good, good. I'm great. Thanks for asking. ¿Saben okay. que me llega el feeling de, de Carlos y de, y de Vicente? No sé, siempre están bien, bien happy. A saber, a saber qué Red Bull se toman antes de la clase. A cup of coffee. A cup of coffee. Vaya, fíjense, fíjense que cuando me cambio de una clase a otra se ve bien borrosa la imagen. Sí, se ahorita bien se le ve oscuro. ahí bien como azul. Ajá, y estaba, estaba bien clarita en la, en la clase anterior. Bueno, lo voy, a, lo voy a parar un poquito, unos minutos y luego lo enciendo. Ok, como, pues a, sí. como ayer va a pasar que, que después se puso bien. Sí, cabal. Pues sí me, 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 me llega ese tipo de vibra, de feeling. Uh -huh. Always. Always. Sí. We try. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we're going to start today's class. Welcome, everybody. And we, on this, in this session, you're welcome. We're going to study something really important. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, Remember that before moving forward, in case you are not using the microphone, just turn it off in order to listen to the rest of the class. And if your camera is not working properly, let me know to avoid asking like every single minute, please turn the cameras on, okay? So, okay. Um, let's see, today's topic is going to be something really important for you to know, which is going to be the, the direct and indirect questions. So previously we okay. were studying the use of WH questions, correct? Okay. But today we're going to study the use of uh, direct and indirect questions. And with the direct questions, you usually answer the questions with yes or no okay like for example uh, do you have a computer okay yes I so do. yes i do or no i don't that's the answer mm -hmm. right but right. with the indirect questions those are like i say more sophisticated questions or like highly questions, like educated questions, like if you are working in an office. For example, a little polite. I'm very polite. That would be that would be polite. very polite. Yeah, not uh, not a little polite, but very polite. Very polite. Uh-huh. So I'm going to ask the same question, but in a polite way. So do you have a computer? Yes, yes I, I do. do. No, I don't. Okay. No, I so, don't. So that's basically your answer, correct? Yeah. Right. However, ah, ya, yeah, ya está mejorando un poquito. La vamos a dar little un minuto más, uh, step by step. Okay. So, uh, the the normal question: Do you have a computer? Yes, I do, or no, I don't. However, mm -hmm. if you want to ask a more educated question, you can say: Do you happen to know? Or do you happen to have a computer? Por casualidad. Do you happen do you, to have a computer? Or do you happen? may I know if you have a computer? Uh -huh. May I know? Okay. Or you can also say, I would like to know if you like have a know, computer. If you have a computer. Mm -hmm. And the answer going to be? It, the answer will be like, that will depend on the, on the structure. If I ask you, do you happen to have a computer? Your answer will be, yes, I do have a one. I do have a computer. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I do have a computer. Yes, in I the, do have a case, computer. In huh? case, teacher, uh, and have, what is the, the auxiliary? Do or have? Because I know that in the one sentence, can can excite to the to auxiliary has works as a as a verb and also as a 
auxiliary verb. The same as do. Do works as a as a verb and as an auxiliary verb. Okay. Give me some seconds. I need to drink water. Right, good. Okay, cool. Now, let me go ahead and uh, type here today's topic, which is yes, direct. Teacher. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Direct and indirect questions. Okay, there you have. That's going to be basically our topic for today. Hey, there you go. Yeah, right. Now <laughs> my picture is Excellent. now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, direct and indirect questions. That's going to be basically. Indirect. How do you that... write uh, indirect? Indirect. I indirect. I wrote it. I wrote it down on the Zoom chat. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. let's see. Okay, indirect. Indirect, direct, direct and, and indirect ah, okay. questions. Yes. Di direct, direct. Direct and indirect direct questions. Direct question. Question. Okay. Question. And indirect. In indirect. Direct. How do you indirect. pronounce? Indirect. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, I always say, guys, that even though we live in a country where English is not spoken, but we need to imitate American speakers. We need a gringo. So uh, sometimes when I have the opportunity to talk to somebody else from another country, they, say, they used to say, hey, where do you learn the language? And I say, I learned it just here at the university in El Salvador. And they say, oh, I'm asking because your pronunciation is better than Excellent. some other people that I have talked to. But the reason, the reason is that I used to imitate American uh, English speakers. Because if we imitate, we are not going to sound like a basic or uh, people who Beginner. are beginners, okay? Yeah. And they are not going to ask you to repeat something. That's the reason that this is my best advice for you guys. Practice and imitate American uh, pronunciation, English speaker. Okay. okay. We're gonna try. Yes, we can try. Uh, let's see. Uh, yesterday we were uh, checking this exercise. I mean, we were not able to complete this exercise. We are going to complete it before moving uh, to the next lesson objective. And I need some volunteers. The first one, uh, which is correct. Any volunteer? Maria Jose, thank you. Uh, the second one, there aren't enough police officers in my city. Aren't. Yes, because aren't is for plural and police officers. Thank you. Number two, who's ready for the number two? It says there is too much traffic, so the government needs to build. Yes, Luis. Uh, more highway. More highways. Okay. And the next one, number three, which is correct? Vicente. Okay, number three, which is correct? There is too, too much pollution in my city. Yes, because much is for uncountables uncountable. and pollution is uncountable too. So it yeah. makes sense. Thank you. Next, complete the statement. I can't sleep at night. There should be. Any volunteer? Number one, teacher, less noise. Less noise. Thank you. 
And we also had the last one. It says complete the following statement using quantity expressions, too many, fewer, more. Make sure not mm -hmm. to use capital letters or periods. The government needs to build more. More. Okay. More highways. Okay, let's check the answers. Oh, you got it. You got, got 100. It. Awesome. Okay. Now, uh, Carlos, help me with the lesson objective for today. Thank you. Okay, teacher. Let's right. uh, learn how to ask the answer indirect question in English. Mm -hmm. In this lesson, practice using indirect question by discussing a city or new destination. Mm -hmm. By the end of this class, you will be able to form polite indirect questions. Indirect. Such as, indirect, sorry, questions such as, could you tell me where is where the bank is? Mm -hmm. Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how often the bus the buses run? Mm -hmm. And do you know where I can catch the bus? This lesson will help you seek information using polite, grammatical, correct English. Grammatically, grammatically, correct. Grammatically. correct. English. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to uh, the video, all right? And then I'm going to give you like some examples. I was able to type and also find for you. Once you can okay. listen and watch to the video, just let me know, please. I think it's loading, by the way. Oh, there you are. I want you to take notes. Ready. Yes. <clears throat> all right, carry on. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me. Could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or... Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, 
and we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right. And then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case I'll ask where, this is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verse. So in this case, I'm going to propose in using this uh, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying the bank, we're not going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? Okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me, I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. All right, and then that is followed by the subject. So in this case, the subject is the buses. And then that is followed by the verb. And so in this case, it's no longer the verb to be, but now it's the verb leave. How often do the buses leave? Could you tell me how often the buses leave? Let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let me go ahead and write that example now. Do you know? That follows the WH word, so in this case is what time. Then that follows the subject. And one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question, we remove 
the auxiliary verbs. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S. And that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present, therefore we need an S as you can see there. And uh, well, let's do the last one there. Uh, what, um, when did flight 566 arrive? So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And uh, the subject is flight 566. And in this case, we have to change the verb to the past because we're not, we're not using an auxiliary. Uh, like we're using the auxiliary, when did flight 566 arrive? In this case, this verb is in the present, but that's because we're using the auxiliary did. So in this case, since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned, we need to change that verb to the past form. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we talked about. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose some questions here. These are common questions that people ask whenever they visit another country, another city, a place you're not familiar with. What are those questions? For example, how much do taxes cost? And Let me go ahead and take a screenshot because I'm going to send it to the Zoom chat. Remember that our goal is to change these direct questions into indirect questions. And you're going to follow this formula that I gave you. So how much do taxes cost? Well, you're going to use do you know or could you tell me or can you tell me and then follow this formula. Okay. Now, um, before completing the exercise, I want to send you these examples to the Zoom chat so for you to complete them and once you can see the screenshot just let me know please okay um direct questions let's work with direct questions and the second person is going to change the direct question to the in indirect question so for example carlos change this question What's your name? This is the direct question or the normal question that we usually ask. So, what's your name? Okay. Could you tell me mm -hmm. what, what's um, your name is? Could you tell me what your name is? Bird to be is always at the end. Okay. Thank you. Vicente, uh, Carlos, direct. Vicente, indirect. Okay. Okay. How much your taxi cost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they. Uh, <clears throat> let me see the. <laughs> let me see the screen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, teacher. It's okay. How much do the taxes cost? Uh, another question. No, you need to change the question to ah. the indirect question. Okay. So Carlos asks you, okay. how much mm -hmm. do taxi cost? Ah, right. Okay. Uh, could you tell me uh, how much the taxis cost. Thank you. Vicente, direct. Uh, Ana, Sonia, indirect. Who? 
Where can I get a map? Excuse me, repeat. Where can I get a map? Uh, could you, okay, let me see. Where can I get a map? A map. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me where can I get a map? Okay. Thank you. Oscar. No, Andrea. Uh, direct. Oscar in direct. A good place to meet friends. One more time. Where is a good place to meet friends? Mm -hmm. I'm direct. Um, can you please tell me where where is a good place to meet friends? Where a good place to meet friends is? Friends is, yes. At the end, the verb to be with the indirect be. question. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thanks. Thanks. Oscar, direct. Evelyn Juarez, indirect. Direct uh, uh, anything of the examples, or you can uh, ask your own idea. Well, where can I? Uh, when can where can I go to run? To run? Where can I go running? Okay. Where can I go running? Or where can I go to run? You can also say that. Where can I go to run? Can you tell me um, where can I go to run? Running? Can I go running? Okay. Evelyn directs. Edgar indirects. Uh... When, no, one no. Where is the, the post office? Where is the post office? Where is? The post office, the post office. Where is the post office? And the indirect is no so, Edgar is going to answer the indirect. Okay. Exactly. Where is the post office? That's your question. Okay, where is the post office? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where could you tell me where the post office is? Thank you. Excellent. An applause for everybody. That's great. Okay, now let me go ahead and share my computer's screen. Okay. And once you can see it, just let me know. I'm going to give you some other examples related to the direct and indirect questions before moving to the exercises online. Okay. okay. There you have different expressions to use in direct questions. So let's focus on the first one over here. You have the first one, okay? Which are the direct questions, all right? This ones, you say, where is Tondo Street? Okay, direct, direct question. Direct where question. Where is Tondo Street, okay? What time does the supermarket open? How much? Do you earn direct questions, correct? What's, okay. What is he doing? And what's your last name? Those are direct questions. Direct questions. But we are practicing the indirect questions as well. So uh, you have different expressions. The first one, can you tell me? Can you tell me? Okay. Do you can know? You 
No. Could you tell me? That's another expression. Uh -huh. May I ask? May I ask? Mm -hmm. what? May I know? Okay. So look at the first, the first direct question, and then we're going to move it to the indirect part. Where is Tondo Street? Can you tell me where Tondo Street is? Yes. Right? Right. So what time does the supermarket open? Do you know what time the supermarket opens? Okay. How much do you earn? Could you tell me how much you earn? Carlos. Yes, teacher, I, I have a question. In the second uh, indirect uh, question, and the ends open, we put the S, but I know yeah. I don't have clear that S uh, uh, in the video, uh, the, it's, it's explained, but I don't catch it. Okay. So here you have this expression. This is the indirect expression, right? Do you know? Yes. But after this part, after the, this expression, you have the indirect question, which is, it starts with what time the supermarket opens, okay? Okay. So in this case, since we are talking, the supermarket and supermarket is singular. Okay. So we are not going to say open. We need the letter S at the end to make it seem singular. The supermarket opens. The lady drives. The okay. lady talks. Carlos speaks. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. All right. So okay. we need we need the the letter S because with he, she, and it we use the formulas. Okay. okay. Letter S. Is it clear now? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. And it says, "How much do you earn?" This is the direct question. But the indirect, would you tell me how much you earn? If you see here. You had the expression, could you tell me? Okay, this is the indirect expression. And then you had the question, how much you earn? Okay, here we didn't write the letter S because you doesn't need letter S. Letter S is for he, she, and it only. I got so, it. All right. It's clear. So, could you tell me how much you earn? All right. What is he doing? May I ask what he is doing? Okay. And the last one, what's your last name? May I know what your last name is? And maybe you can ask yourself, why is here is not at the end? Remember that we need to focus not only on the structure, but also on the logical sentence, okay? Or uh, on the context, or grammatically speaking, doesn't sound right. If I say, may know, I'm sorry, may ask what he doing is, does it make sense? No. No may ask what he's doing. That makes sense. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, beside this uh, direct questions and indirect questions, which are the normal ones, I brought you an extra information. This, you have also just no questions, okay? Here, we were working with WH questions, correct? But with this one, is just no questions. 
So, uh, what's the difference between WH questions? WH questions, you need extra information. Yes, no question, you just say yes or no. Are you happy? Yes, I am. No, I'm not, right? So, with yes, no questions, you are going to also use if or whether. Whether is the same as is, plus positive word order. For example, are you living in London? If you answer this normal question, are you living in London? Yes, I am, or no, I'm not, right? No, I'm not. All right, so you have here the expression, I'd like to know, or I would like to know. If. If you are living in London. If you are living in London. If you see, if separate this expression and from this one, it's in the middle of them, okay? If you it doesn't are living have a in London. Question mark. This one, you don't have a question mark. I would like to know if you are living in London. Okay. So, next. It's not a question. It does basically a question. I would like to know if you are living in London. However, when you use if, in the middle, you don't use question mark at the end. Uh, Just when you are using whether, you use question mark at the end. So for example, does John like flying? Do you know whether John likes flying? Is it clear? Yeah. But the meaning of this. weather, teacher. If. Weather. weather is the same as if. It's similar. But when you use if, you don't write question mark at the end. Okay? But when you use weather, you do write a question mark at the end. Clear? Evelyn. Um, when I don't, when I, I should use if and when I should use whether, it depends on the context. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. Whether you use, you use it or you don't. Whether. Uh-huh. When you talk, you are not going to um identify if the person is using question mark or not just when you are writing correct did she go shopping i'm not sure if she went shopping why went because here the question started with did and did past. is past past tense mm -hmm. What, uh, was she a teacher? Can you tell me whether she was a teacher? And if you see, question mark, because we have weather in the weather. middle of. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Well, in the practice, we want to know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let's put in practice then. Uh, right. We are going to go to the platform and we are going to complete it. Let me just check here. <clears throat> okay, it says, based on the listening, let me erase this part over here, I don't like it. Okay. It says, uh, the number, the number one, and I need a volunteer. It says, based on the listening activity from the video on 2.7, answer the following questions. Could you tell me 
where the nearest ATM is. So that's the indirect question. Uh huh. Answer it. Yes, Vicente. According to the video, uh, mm -hmm. they says there is one upster across from the duty free shop. Mm -hmm. There is so an the ATM. Mm -hmm. It's after across from the duty free mm -hmm. shop. Okay. All right. Number two, second volunteer. It says, based on the listening activity from video on 2.7, answer the following question. How often do the buses run? Evelyn. Uh, they run every 20 minutes or so. Okay. Thank you. Next. Answer the following question. What other information does Ari ask for? Lorena. Mm -hmm. Level uh, number three, ¿verdad? The cost of a bus the, to the city. Mm -hmm. It says, what is the nearest internet cafe? Volunteer. Oscar. Could you tell me where the nearest internet cafe is? Okay. Luis, how late do the buses run? Sorry, teacher. Uh, the answer uh, mm -hmm. uh, is the number the one. Let's the see. First. Uh, could you tell me? Wow, yes, thank you. The bird to be at the end. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How late do the buses run, Luis? Do you know how late the buses run? The first option or third option? Do you know how late do the buses run? The third option. Sure. First option. Okay. No, third. Third. The oh, the third. Okay. There you go. Excellent. Easy or difficult to answer to to understand. At this time, easy. Easy. Okay. Great. Now let's move to the next page. I think it's learning. Okay, section three. Remember that we need to complete the section three for this week. So that's the reason why we are uh, like running, all right? So there you have, I'm going to read it. Build your English language skill with this lesson on adjectives and nouns. By the end of this class, you will learn how to express of your opinions about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to describe your house or apartment in English and use evaluating phrases such as apartments are too small for peps, houses are too expensive, or houses cost too much money. Now, let me go ahead and play the, the video and let's take some notes.
Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and to. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. First of all, what are adjectives? Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So they describe people, places, or things. Since we're talking about evaluating houses and apartments, what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a lot of those words here. And then what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many more. So let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left. Apartments aren't big enough for families. So in order for us to make that particular evaluation, we can think of the following structure. So let me go ahead and write that now. Following this structure, we can see that we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we have apartments. This is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be in its negative form. Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because the next evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't. And so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families okay and let's do one more uh, we can also say that apartments aren't 
and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. The next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now using the word to. And so what I want you to notice is the following. That we're just going to have different ways of evaluating things. And so there isn't just one way to do it. There are many different ways. So in this case, we're going to use this expression. And I want you to notice what's going to change. So I want you to think about what is the opposite of big. Well, the opposite of big, we can we can think of that as being small, right? So in this case, I want you to notice what, what's going to change. So in this case, I'm going to say apartments are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include two small. So the only thing that changes is that I'm no longer using the bird to be in its negative form, but now I'm using it in its positive form. And then I'm including two plus the adjective small. And I'm saying for families. So what I want you to notice is that these two sentences, these two evaluations are the same thing. The only thing is that I'm expressing them in different ways. The next thing that I would like to do now is to show you how to make evaluations. But now we're going to talk about making evaluations using nouns. And a couple of things will change. And so let me present the formula at this time, and I'm going to show you what kind of things will change. Well, first of all, um, similar to making evaluations with adjectives, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we're going to say apartments. Okay, That's going to follow a verb. In this case, it's no longer the verb to be. So that's the first thing that changes. We're no longer using the verb to be. So in this case, we're using any other kind of verb. In this case, it happens to be that that's on a negative. So we, we're going to say don't have. That's, uh, the verb is on its negative form. And then this follows enough. So opposite from adjectives, where we would include the adjective first, when we make evaluations using nouns, we no longer use the adjective first. We're going to include enough, and then we're going to include the noun. So let me give an example here. Don't have enough. And then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to include. So in this case, don't have enough parking spaces. OK, uh, so the noun is parking spaces. And then you can think of a complement, if you will. So you can include something else there. So for example, uh, what could that be? Don't have enough parking spaces for people, right? That could be the complement. But in this case, the noun is parking spaces. And quickly, I want to talk about nouns. So what are nouns? What are some of the nouns that we can think about when we are um, you know, thinking about making evaluations of apartments and houses? Well, uh, we can think of things like parking spaces, as you can see there. We can think of things like closet space. Right? We can think of things like privacy, and of course, we can think of things like money, if you will. Right. So these kind of things are nouns that we can think of. So we can say the following. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments don't have enough closet space. Apartments don't have enough privacy. And the last example that I would like to make is how to use to. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this, I'm going to take that example there. Houses, this follows the verse, so that continues to be the same. We are no longer going to include the word enough. So in this case, we're going to use too much money. Right? Houses cost too much money. So if we can think of this, I'm going to follow the pattern there. Houses cost, that follows the verb. And then in this case, I want you to notice what happened. So we include too much money. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to evaluate your house or apartment. Depends on where you live, right? And I want you to evaluate your house or apartment using adjectives, such as the ones that are here. 
and of course following the formula that I presented to you earlier today. And I also want you to evaluate your house or apartment using nouns. So uh, once again, using the formula that I'm presenting to you today. And then of course, you're going to follow this formula. So I want you to make as many examples as you Okay, guys. Thank you. So, let's see. I was able to copy some information right there. Okay. The first one you have is enough too much as us and the last one let's see let me see if i can see it let me see if i can see it so uh too much enough just as many as, that's the last one, just as many as. Just as many as. Okay, by looking at the examples, I will allow you to uh, complete some, I mean, some sentences using those examples, enough, too much, as, as, just as many as. So you can say uh, apartments don't have enough parking spaces, okay? So you can also say my house has a, too much dust, for example. Is it clear? Okay. Um, you can also say, let's see, uh, the rural area is as fresh as my house, for example. As fresh as, so between us, you need to write down an adjective. Let me write some example of the ones I gave you. So the apartments, don't have enough space. That's going to be the first one. Enough space. Okay. The second one, I can say my house has too much dust. <laughs> okay. Um, you can also say that rural houses are as fresh as my house. Son tan frescas como mi casa. All right. So, in apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Okay. And you can talk about apartments, houses, or you can also talk about cities. Okay. You can talk about places, countries, etc. Okay. So okay. you can... Uh, if I give you a, an example related to our country, you can say El Salvador has too much traffic, correct? So you can also say beaches are as amazing as lakes, okay? You can also say uh, 
uh, hills have just as many trees as rural areas. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Clear. <clears throat> okay. Let's listen to two examples and then I'm going to let you know. I mean, let you go. Two volunteers, because we're going to continue tomorrow with this uh, topic. Uh huh. Two volunteers, and then I let you go. Who's ready? Okay, Oscar. Wait, please. Um, um, Cuco Beach is 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 um, enough for for fun. Mm, okay, is enough for fun. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Orange, or you can say that Tunco Beach. Uh, doesn't have uh, enough cheap restaurants, okay? Because there are a lot of restaurants, but those are really expensive. Well, okay. thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Another one. Any other volunteer? The last volunteer. Okay, let's listen to Carlos. <laughs> okay, teacher. Uh... El Salvador uh -huh. have the best people as another country. <laughs> uh, let's see, but you need the adjective right there. You can say, El Salvador has, has as many beautiful people as other countries. Okay. As, as okay, as many beautiful people many. <laughs> as other countries. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Uh, I'm going to let you go now. If you haven't eaten anything, enjoy your dinner and see you tomorrow. Thank see you very much. Night. Thank you so much, teacher. My pleasure. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good see tomorrow. you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.